I'd like to add one thing to Dr. Claude Anderson's message, and he's one of the only men that I know of that has a working solution that has been put into place for blacks, which is practicing group group economics, just like the rest of the world is doing. And my question is this, me being the man that always talks about TV slash your friend, the slave box. The question is this, how exactly do you plan to put Powernomics, his solution, into place with no time? That's my question. Because I'm the only man that brings up the link between TV. I'm the only one that's talking about it. That's all I'm about. I'm about getting the slave box out of your home. So here we have a solution. Here you have the only black man that's giving you one. You don't even hear me saying I have a solution because actually I don't have the plan laid out in clear detail like he does. He's already given it to you. There's no need for me to reinvent the will when it's provided for you. But my question is, how exactly do you plan to approach the will having no time? How is that? How do you plan to even read about the steps and the actions that he has laid out for you with no time. Can someone explain that to me? We've got time for Harry Potter 1, 2, 3 to 7. We've got time for Star Wars and the new X-Men and Godzilla and Desperate Housewives and Sex and the City. But we don't have time on the guillotine for Powernomics. So can someone explain that to me? How How exactly does this work? What's the plan? He told you, here's your problem. Here's the solution. It's been tested. Different communities around the nation have tried it. How would you even know that with no time? You don't even have time to check and verify that. But you've got time for sex in the city. You've got time for two broke girls. You've got time for some family shows that are actually in the the guise of anti-family. You've got time for everything else except dealing with your problems. Who can explain exactly how this works? How do you read any book with no time? Does anyone care to explain that? Even I'll, I'll even let you use a children's book if it helps. You can choose the cat in the hat. You can choose the ABC book. Just, just tell me how that works that you can read it with no time. I tell you all the time, problems need solutions, solutions need time, but TV needs your time. How does that work? You've got time for Seinfeld, 20 seasons of The Simpsons, South Park, Martin, Fresh Prince, Denzel Washington, The Karate Kid, and all that, but how exactly... When will you have time for his solutions? When will you have time for your communities? When will you have time to deal with the fact that your children cannot walk home safely after school? When will you have time to deal with the fact that all of your women are walking around in wigs? When will you have time to deal with the fact that your boys have been turned out walking around in dresses with with lisps? Whatever you want to call that. Speech impediments. When will you have time to deal with that? When will you have time to deal with the drugs that are being pushed, ushered into your community and you lack the power to stop it? It's like the opium war revisited in Chicago. When will you have time to deal with that? You don't. Because I told you TV needs your time. In fact, it demands your time. You've got a solution, yet no time to even approach it. This is why many of you, you've just heard his name now when he's been around for the last 20 plus years fighting on your behalf, yet you didn't know his name. You had Malcolm X in 2005, yet you didn't even know he existed. 
but you knew about 50 Cent. You knew about Lil Wayne. You knew about Michael Jordan. You knew about a Sosa baseball player, whoever he is. You knew about some football stars and basketball stars and Will Smith and Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, but you didn't know about the most important and one of the only important black men that you should have known about. Is that a mistake or is it by design, I ask you? Is it a coincidence that the information you received was saturated with Kobe Bryant and his affair and Tiger Woods and his affair and Michael Jordan and his divorce and Michael Jackson? Is that by chance? Or is it by design? I ask you this. I'm telling you the only solution is to get this box out of your home. That's your only solution. You do not have alternative solutions. If there were alternatives, I would have told you. I would have mentioned them. I would have brought them up. I would I would debate them. I would go over the pros and cons. There are no alternative solutions. There are none. Zero. There's nothing. There's nothing else waiting behind that door. You've already lived a life of a second class citizen. There's nothing left beyond that. You don't go down to third class is what I'm saying. You just go out You're just extinct beyond that. So I'm telling you, this is your only solution. He has the solution. It's been there waiting for you, but you don't have time. You're busy. You've got to get through the next season of Scandal. You've got to get through the next episode of some basketball wives and the Braxtons and more women walking around in wigs and some effeminate men on BT. Emotional men crying out for attention. Thug life, baby. You haven't had enough fill of your Tupac. You've got time for all of these people who have zero to offer you. What solutions has Little Wayne laid out for you? What solutions has Oprah laid out for you? What solutions has Denzel Washington laid out for you? No, not our Denzel. You've been taught to worship the tools that were used to enslave you. And so when I attack, when I mention their names, you just say, not them. Not them. Okay, don't put them in the same boat as Little Wayne. Not our Denzel. Not our James Brown. He's the godfather of soul. I don't care who you are. Either you're talking about solutions, you have them, or you don't. I do not care who you are. The godfather of what? Either you were the godfather of our resurrection or you were not. I care about whether or not you were Dr. Claude Anderson. I care about whether or not you brought solutions. I care about whether or not you have proof that they can be implemented. I don't care about you being the godfather of something intangible. Something I can't see. I can feel. We love feelings. Ooh, I can feel. He's the godfather of swag. He's the godfather of soul. He's the godfather of oomph. He's the godfather of hanging. He's the godfather of chill. He's the godfather of what? He's the godfather of keeping it real. I do not care about things that can't be measured, touched, felt, or shown to even exist. He's the godfather of prayer. 
I'm telling you, your only solution is to get this box out of your home. When someone tells you you have alternate solutions, do not believe this. It's a lie. Do not listen to them. Do not approach them. Do not attempt to debate them. They are, they've been put in your path. See, a lot of people don't know. The last, right before you're about to wake up, you have roadblocks that are put in your place in a certain order. And first, the first ones for a black male, the first ones that are going to be put into your place are usually other other blacks. And often, it's going to be males first because we've been taught to be led by the women. So then after the women... Uh, after the men will come the women in the form of your aunts, mothers, uncles, aunt, uh, sorry, effeminate uncles, so to say. But uh, after you're able, if you're able to get through them and understand that this, the decisions you've been led down this path to make are completely wrong. And we've been going down the path from the time you notice that you are going down the path, then in the end, it's going to be someone outside of your race. And the final person who's who's going to confront you about turning around is always, mark my words, always going to be a white person. Because blacks have been taught to be validated by whites. So in the end, it's always going to come down to that. And he's going to come to you with the following words. He's going to say, hey, man, buddy, bro. And and sometimes I'll actually mean that. It's not a problem. You know, I have no problem there with with people of other races, but it always comes out like this. This is how the game works. It's going to say, hey, bro, you know, things are not as bad as what you say and you're just overreacting and and that's not really how things are. Do not believe him. Do not listen. Do not debate. Do not... You must understand you only have one option. When someone tries to tell you things are not as bad as you claim, do not believe them. A homeless man is in no position to debate. When someone comes to you and they try to convince you, That the fact that you're homeless, the fact that you cannot protect your wife, the fact that your child is sleeping on the street. And when you express the need for change and when someone says, hey, 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 things are not as bad as you claim. He is the final gatekeeper that you must ignore. Because he understands That if you've lived a life of servitude and second class citizenship and you're still suffering from the side effects of Jim Crowism, he realizes that if he can put you back to sleep, it took you until the age of 30 to wake up. If he can put you back to sleep, you may not wake up until you're 55, you're tired, you're burnt out, you've witnessed Your children go through the same thing and you've given up hope. Many of you do not understand this is how white supremacy works. It exists to make you feel like there is no possible hope. Why try? Why even try, Bertie? What's the point of turning off the TV? You can't change anything. Things will not get better. It's just a movie. So what? I've got a job. Things are okay. They're not as bad as you say. Let me just get by. I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to disturb people. I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. So what if I don't have a husband? Whatever. So what if I'm a dark-skinned girl that's overweight wearing this wig and I've got you know, two hours a week to put it on but and work on that, but I don't have time to work out. So what? At least I've got a job and that's the way the world is. So what if my son's been turned out? So what if I've been sterilized? So what 
if I'm on Section 8 in public housing, and so what if if the world didn't work out the way I used to dream it would? That's life. Let me just continue to get by. So what if I have to work at Walmart? At least I have a job. At least I'm alive. At least I have water. You see, they've taught you to beg. They taught you to beg for your birthright. Everything that was yours is no longer yours and you're going to beg for basic necessities because you don't believe you deserve more. You don't believe you deserve a better life. So what, you're a second-class citizen, I don't care. I do not care, I'm alive, and that's enough. I tell you this, blacks are afraid, they're weak. I don't mean to put anyone down, but I got an email long ago from some family. They said, Bertie, be careful with what you say. Maybe someone's going to hear it. Maybe you'll go to jail. I tell you, we are afraid. And this is the generation that raised us. The generation that raised us is weak. They're cowards. They are afraid. They are afraid. But your women are being sterilized. And you're still afraid. Afraid of what? Can I ask you that? What are you what are you afraid of? Maybe someone's going to come get me. Okay, and then what? Well, then maybe they'll put me in jail, put me in prison, and kill me. Okay. But you don't seem to have a problem with them doing the soft kill on you. You don't seem to have a problem with the eugenic policies that are in place now. You don't seem to have a problem with the drugs that are pushed into your community so that no form of reproduction and family unit will ever take place. You don't seem to have a problem with that. You don't seem to have a problem with the thuggish culture that's being pushed by Jewish Europeans that own most of the media companies that keep pushing thug life unto your youth so that either they end up in jail or in hell making money for someone else. You don't really care about that, but you're you're afraid that maybe they'll just come outright and do something. That they'll show their faces. I tell you, anyone who's listening My brother's daughter, stepdaughter, what have you, if you're listening, do not follow, I'm sorry, do not follow the people that have raised you. We are cowards. You're 15 years old, so you've already witnessed 15 years of cowardice. How many times have you seen someone stand up and say, you know what, I don't need, I do not need to take this. They say that they say that the the way my hair looks is inappropriate for this job, but it's just my natural hair. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stand up and build my own. I went to an interview to work in that construction company and they told me they didn't like the way I looked. Told me to cut my braids. You know what? I've had enough. I'll build my own because I believe I can. You've witnessed 15 years of cowardice. You just watched it play out on the NBA. Donald Sterling. That's proof it was a slap in the face. You watched a group of hundreds of men, millionaires, behave like cowards. Said, don't bring those blacks to my game. What did they do? Uh, maybe um uh, next season if um 
you know, if, if things don't change, then maybe um, next season, you know, maybe next season, I, I don't really know, but uh, may, maybe in a season or two, um, uh, maybe maybe when I retire or about before I retire when they're about to uh, cut me loose and they're going to stop signing my checks anyway, maybe I'll kind of stand up and, and show the youth an example and sign a check for the Boys and Girls Club that they also own that'll sponsor me and make me look good. They're cowards. What did their agent say? Don't. Don't go on the record making a statement. What did their promoter say? Don't go on the records making a statement. I can tell you right now because I've got family. What did their family say? Don't go on the records making a statement. What did their friends say? Fellow NBA players say? Don't go on the records making a statement. Cowards. I tell you, if you're listening to me now, do not follow these cowards. We're afraid. We're weak. How often have you ever heard a black man say, you know what? I don't care what they think about me. I do not care. I'm going to build it myself. Look at what Chinese people do when they move to a new country. They arrive there. They say, I don't see anyone that looks like me. I don't see a town. I don't see anything that I own. I'm going to build it. I'm going to make it myself. I do not see a Chinese school in this city. I'm going to build one myself. I'm going to make it myself. Deja, if you're listening, I'm sorry you've been raised by cowards. I don't know everyone who's raised you. I don't know all the pastors in your church and the Sunday school teachers and deacons. I don't know all your teachers in the public school. I don't know your parents very well. I don't know your uncles, aunts, cousins, but I know our community. Chicago is full of cowards. 800,000 blacks there plus. And I can tell you easily 700,000 plus cowards. That's why the city is in the shape that it's in. That's why they have to tell you stuff like, don't walk down this street. That's why they have to tell you that. That's the language of cowards because they were unable to change anything. And someone's going to say, he thinks he's so much better. And that's their excuse. See, I'll tell you, I haven't changed anything. I have not changed any of the streets that you have to walk down when you're coming back home, when you're going to school, when you're driving around. I haven't changed that. How often have you actually heard a black person say that, Deja? We love to practice group delusion. Because it's much easier for me to to try to keep my face, to try to keep my self-respect, my self-worth, and tell you, you know what, it's because of other people that the city's like this. It's because of other people that we're in our situation right now. It's much harder for me to just tell you the truth, that I was a coward also, that I didn't do anything also, that I was afraid to even listen to Dr. Claude Anderson. I was afraid. How often have you heard any of them tell you that? I tell you, do not follow cowards. Do not follow people that practice delusion in large groups. They're afraid. They're leading you down the wrong path. The youth Many people want to wait on the youth. The truth is, when I think about my brother's daughter or stepdaughter, I do not believe that there's anything we should hope for from that generation. Because we didn't stand up now. We still have the TV the main tool that's used to enslave you in our homes. It's still there. 
So if I had to guess when I'm thinking of this little 15 year old girl, I'm going to guess. Honestly, that they already got her. I'm going to guess that she's already been crowned with a wig. Now, I don't know her. I could be wrong. People may say, well, why is that important? Okay, well, why is it important? So since it's not important, let's put wigs on all the little white girls. Since wigs are not important, then let's put them on all the little white girls because they're beautiful. That's my point. Since they're not important, let's put Afro wigs on all the girls in Chicago because they're not important. Doesn't matter. We're just people. One love. Why do I have to be a race? Good. You don't have to be a race. So now I'm going to put this Afro wig on you. Well, I'm just a person. Why would you do that? I don't well, don't put that black hair on me. No, 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 no. It's not black hair. We're just people. Remember? Yeah, but I'm saying I don't want an Afro wig on me. No, I'm saying we're just people, so it shouldn't matter. Let's just be people. So if I had to guess, I would follow the notion that our children are being raised by cowards, that are delusional, that are afraid. So when I go back home, what do I see? Still remember that, said it before, in the car with my father, what do I see? Boys, undisciplined, walking down the street, nothing to do, loitering, looking for trouble. They're looking for the life that they've been fed on BET, which is also a lie, group delusion. It's group healing, run in reverse. So you see boys walking down the street. With so much pain in their hearts. Because they didn't have fathers. Mothers that didn't want them. Hate. From the fact that they were just born. You saw. Drug dealing. In the middle of the day. You just saw police beating black people on the streets. You saw them unable to protect themselves from the drugs coming into their communities. That is the weak. Does anyone want to go back and tell me what the opium war was about? You don't have to go into detail about the history, but can someone tell me what the opium war was that took place? That's what you see in Chicago. That's what you see taking place now. And everyone's still waiting For their adorned leaders. They're still waiting for their Oprah's and Denzel's and Obama and Michael Jordan to come solve the problem. Because that's really easy. It's really easy to sit back when you've got TV. Give a man prayer, the ability to pray and believe that something is going to change. And if it doesn't, so what? At least he's going to have his pie in the sky. Give him prayer and TV, and I promise you, I promise you, you do not need to give him anything else. You don't need to give him money. What money he does get, it can be as as little as possible, as microscopic as possible. He does not need to even see the money because you've given him TV and prayer, two of the biggest illusions possible. 
TV, the illusion that his life is changing and becoming better, and at least he's having fun, even though he's not even involved of, in the process of having the fun, and the fun that's being had is made of him. Can anyone show me some proof that TV does not exist to mock blacks? Because I promise you, for anything you can show me, I can show you nine times more. Nine times more that it exists with the pure, maybe not the pure intent, but at least at the bare minimum, the residual intent to mock blacks and you buy it every time you go for it. Its primary purpose is to mock you, to scorn you, to ridicule you, to laugh at you. And you fall for it every time. There is no other solution. The TV has to come out of your home. I'm still talking. It's because you are not listening. You want to be entertained. You've been programmed to, ooh, let's just be entertained. Let me just hear something interesting. Let me hear a joke. You still want jokes. Why? I'm going to make a a broadcast about this in the future. But think about what, what kind of TV should a homeless man be watching? When a man is homeless, he's sleeping on a cutout box. His wife is sleeping next to him on the street. He can't feed his son. What kind of TV should he be watching? If he should be watching any. See, the debate you want to have is, well, birdie, TV's not so bad. Yeah, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying... Does the homeless man even have time? Is this his concern? Does he have time for anything other than something that deals with the fact that he is homeless? Because if you ask me, oh, Bertie, you're an extremist. Yes, maybe I am. I, I just believe that if this man is homeless, he's on the street, his wife is right there next to him, he cannot feed his kid. I believe you do not have time to deal with anything other than the fact that you are homeless, you're on the street, you can't provide and take care of your family. I don't care how many jokes this next comedy is going to show you. I don't care how funny this prank is. I do not care how interesting the song is. I don't care how informative this discovery documentary about dolphins is. You do not have time to watch anything that deals with a topic other than your homelessness in the context of having a solution. You don't have time to learn about Google Glass and how it's going to benefit the rest of the world. You are homeless. And that's always your your main argument. But TV can inform us about so much and we can learn about the world and it can give us this. I do not care. You are homeless. Yeah, but it's so funny and it was interesting. You are homeless. I do not care. I don't care how interesting it was. I don't care what new words and new vocabulary and new songs and about the VMAs. I do not care. You're an extremist. Am I? Because I'm going to ask you, are you? What sort of extreme are you at the fact that you can be living in poverty and do not care? Is that not the definition of an extremist? Because I feel pretty normal. Being a homeless man that cares about being homeless. And I find you very extreme. The fact that you want to debate me about watching American Idol, the VMAs, and Iron Man. The fact that you want to tell me how great of a movie it is. 
You want to tell me how great of a movie Iron Man is. But you can't send your child to walk 200 meters down the street without being in fear of her life. You want to tell me how good this movie is. But you can't control the drugs that are coming into your community. You want to tell me how good this movie is. But you don't even have families. You don't even have fathers in the home and you don't understand why. You want to talk about movies. The fact that you're homeless and don't care shows me that you are sick. And black people love talking about healing. Every show you turn on, all of the the talk radio shows, they're always about healing. It's the time for healing and we've got to heal. And we're going to heal. It's all about understanding yourself. And I had to go to... uh, uh, This is what I said. We're practicing group delusion. When all of your shows about healing... And none of them address the injuring. This shows that we are practicing group delusion. What do they always say? Yeah, it's just about love and spreading love and Jesus and love. And when that's your answer, is that your solution? Because Dr. Claude Anderson also has a solution. See, you want the easy way out. Because right now we're afraid, we're lazy, we're weak. But let me remind you, we've been made to be afraid. We've been made to be weak. We've been made to be lazy and we've fallen for it. We're taking the bait. So now we actually are lazy. We are weak. We are afraid. We are cowards. And that's why it's so easy to say, well, we just need love. Let's just be people. Yeah, it's easy to say that. Let's just be people. But there are groups that are pushing drugs into your community who don't share that same belief. But you want to be people. Let's just be people. Let's just love each other. Yeah, that's that's great. The problem is that there are groups pushing drugs in your community. They do not share the same belief. Do you not understand this is a war? There are people with guns shooting your children in the head. And you want to say, let's just be people. You guys are all wearing blue shirts. And you're saying, let's just be equal. Let's just be people. Can't we all just get along Yet the people in power, in control, they're out to kill anyone wearing a blue shirt. Do you not understand how this works? The concept of being equal is all right by me. The problem is that the people in power, the people with the guns, the people doing the carnage, Do not share this belief. So this war was not started by me. I'm I'm only acting in it involuntarily. But I tell you I'm going to participate in it. Because it has been waged. And when I get to power. Then I can call for peace. But right now it is time to take up your arms. It is time to change your actions. It is time to take appropriate behavior. It is time to stop what you're doing. This is not the time to continue the same actions. What actions are we talking about? We're talking about power nomic actions. We're talking about TV. Because these are the only things that will bring you out of your predicament. This is the only solution to stopping the war. But can't we just all get along? 
you do not understand. If you don't understand now, if you do not understand now, if you don't understand now what's been happening to you, if you don't understand why Chicago is the way it is, It's all meant to take away your hope. Do not debate this. When they come talking about TV and how great it is, do not listen. It's a ploy. It's a trick that's been used time and time again. Let me explain how this works. Because I have friends that believe in this. think they're my friends and that's that's another story but let me explain how this works when a black person wakes up to the fact that they're being deceived by the world they're participating in because we've been taught that the life that we live as second class citizens is perfectly normal and it's all right you can't really change anything so don't really talk about it and if you do well you sound kind of racist there even though you don't actually have anything you don't actually control anything you don't really have any power wealth and influence but the fact that you're talking about this is too much so just keep that to yourself and I don't like the way it sounds and and how could you, why would you even say that so look at this this is how the game works when i bring up the fact of how the music is also put in your your way as a wall it's meant to block you and and guide you and and continue guiding you down the path that you've been going down from the time you were born for people that are my generation and when you wake up to the fact that It's actually misleading you. There's going to be someone who's going to say, and not just someone, many people, sorry, many people that are going to contest you. They're going to say, how could you say that? Look at all the greatness that's come out of rap and pop and music and look at all the greatness. I've had so many friends say this to me. And... The problem with this is is the following. If it's so great, let me give it all to you. Let me give it to your children. Let me give it to your nieces and nephews and your eight-year-olds. Because why is it that when I talk about getting rid of this, this thuggish culture, this selfishness, when I talk about improving our lives. When I talk about practicing poweronomics, what Dr. Claude Anderson speaks about, why is it that then and only then everyone gets really defensive of rap? The people that actually don't care about it, don't listen to it, would never let their children, their eight-year-old nieces and nephews and seven-year-olds, they would never let them listen to it, yet alone internalize it. But then everyone's really defensive. That's why I fuck your bitch, you fat motherfucker. Take money. Take money. First the fuck you click in the fifth the game. And then all the filth. Everyone's defensive about it now. But when I'm like, hey, you've got to get this music out of your home. You've got to stop listening to it. This is not helpful. Turn it off. I never want to hear it again. That's when the guards show their faces. Hey, but come on, Birdie. It's, it's got some good in it. It's not so bad. There's some good. In it. And then they come ready for a debate. Don't fall for the trick. Because this is what will happen. They're going to pull out Black Eyed Peas. Where is the love? They're going to pull out Whitney Houston. I believe the children are future. They're going to pull out Mariah Carey and Celine Dion. 
baby, I still believe. And they're going to go into the tank and they're going to pull out everything they can to convince you you're wrong. And we being blacks, we love being validated by whites. They're going to pull out everything they can. And it's going to work like this. If they can convince you, if they can show an ounce of doubt in you that you are wrong, then they're going to get you to doubt yourself. They're going to pry open that door. And then when you walk down the block, when you're back in Chicago, New York, L.A., D.C., Atlanta, Detroit. When you're walking down the block and your eyes start to tear and you just say, why is it that things just don't seem to get better? Why can't we change this? They're going to say, hey, you know what, Bertie, before we talked about this and you said that this was your music. So take it. There it is. This is yours. Because they're preparing to throw it back on you. When I say this is not the black man's music. This is not the black man's music. 50 Cent does not speak for black men. I do. Little Wayne does not speak for black men. I do. Denzel Washington does not represent black men. I do. If they can get you to cast doubt. When it comes down to it, then they're going to say, hey. Bertie, remember when we talked about that and you kind of agreed with me? Yeah. Well, now, since you did, here's your artist. Here's your little Wayne. Because you kind of agreed with me. You agreed that there was some goodness, just some In rap and hip hop and pop. You believe that. Yeah TV it was. You believe that some of the actors. Are an exception so here they are. Don't complain. Because you agreed with me. This is how the game works. They're going to try to stop you. From waking up. To the fact that you've been misled. For as long as you were awake. From the moment you were able to remember your life, you were being misled. Your right hand is actually your left hand. And you'll never understand that with the TV in your home. I tell you, get it out of your home. When someone comes, do not debate them if you do. Do it on your terms. For example, I'll tell you my terms. I do not debate in my home. I don't allow wigs in my home. I don't allow drugs in my home. These conversations are needed. It's okay. But do it on your terms. I promise you this. I will cut off my right hand if it talks back to me in my home. I promise you. I will kick anyone with a wig from this point forward out of my home. I do not care about the repercussions. They will not be allowed into my home. I promise you this. Someone tries to bring drugs into my home. I'll throw them out. We will not speak again. I do not care if it's Jesus. He can condemn me in the afterlife. The bar has been set. There is no compromising. If someone doesn't like it, so be it. TV is the same. I'm building a school. I do not have time for it. I do not have time for Harry Potter and the lightning on his forehead and Spider-Man and Iron Man and Superman and the X-Men and the Wolverines. I do not have time for them. I'm building a school. I'm going to be practicing group economics just like the rest of the world. For the black men that are building, that have projects they're working on, I'm donating 
My money's there. I've already given it. You need to be on the same page. My standards are there. Get in line. There's no TV in my home. No drugs in my home. No wigs in my home. Get the slave box out of your home. I'm Bertie Tolar, the only man that's talking about taking down your friend, the slave box. Get that TV out of your home. Deja, please, you got to listen to me. Listen to me, Deja. If you, if you miss this chance, I promise you, you know what they're planning for you. Look around the community. You know what they're planning for you. You know they're setting you up to be a single woman with a wig fat, overweight, with an attitude. They're going for broke. The first thing you can do and your only solution is to get that TV out of your home because they're planning on you having a wig. They're planning on you being overweight. They're planning on you having an attitude. They're planning on it. This is by design. This is no accident. This is no accident. They want you to believe that for centuries, black women have been like this. That is a lie. It's by design. Black women have not been rolling their necks for centuries. They haven't been babies, mamas for centuries. The people that have invented writing have not been thugs for history. But this is what they want you to believe. Deja, get that tool out of your home. If you're unable to do it now because this is not your home, you're still under the guidance of your guardians. The first chance you get, never purchase one. Because all day they're going to show you images of what they want you to become. This is why they give you Oprah. Another single woman. Who's doing all right. With no legacy, no family, no one to pass anything on to. She's doing all right, though. She made it. She got by. Notice the words they give you. She got by. She made it. She passed. You don't hear words like excelled, exceeded. Get the slave box out of your home. That is your only solution. Step one, slave box. Step two. Get your image right, Jason Black, Tommy Sotomayor, Step 3, Powernomics, Dr. Claude Anderson, Dr. Umar. Follow the steps. That is your solution. Birdie, what is the solution? The solution is Step 1, get the TV out of your home. After and only after you have done that, should you visit TBA, the Black Authority, Jason Black, Tommy Sotomayor, those two, after you have your mental stability and some of your psychological issues dealt with then and only then should you visit Dr. Umar and Dr. Claude Anderson but as of now you are of no use to them I'm Bertie Tolar get the slave box out of your home